All right, now I want to talk about using the clone node method and other elements that you can use on your page as templates for content that you want to add later on. So I have a little bit of a CSS right here that I'm applying to my page. I've built a div inside my body. I'm using the class advertisement to point to this little bit of CSS. Basically, I'm just putting a box around it and sizing it. I have a header tag and a couple of paragraphs. That's all the content there is. What I want to do is I want to copy this content inside of one of these sections. There's two sections. First one I'm going to use to make copies of this, place it inside of here, and then later on we're going to use a script tag to create a template for content that we're going to copy. If I look in the browser, this is what I've got. So here is that div with the class advertisement. It's just got a width, it's got some padding, it's got color set on the text and on the border. That's all there is. I want to take this and place a copy of it inside of that first section. So on my script, I'm waiting DOM content loaded. I'm calling this function as soon as that event fires. Declared a bunch of variables that I'm going to use. T1, T2, these are my two sections here, target one, target two. Those are the IDs. So I want to place this div inside of here. Now if I were to create a variable, let's say div1 equals document query selector advertisement. Now I have this variable is pointing to this div right here. If we were to say t1 append child div1, what we're going to be doing is really just moving this div inside of here. We're not creating a copy of it. So I refresh. Don't see anything visually changing on the page, but if we come in here and we look at the elements, you'll see that my original div has moved from here to inside of this. The section now contains that div. We just moved it from here to here. So that's what this append child does. Find the original thing and move it. If I try to create multiple copies of it just by doing append child, I'm just going to be moving it around on the page. So that's not going to work for what we want to do. We want to put inside here a copy of this original div. So I'm going to use the clone node method. And I'm going to start off with a false, just to demonstrate what that does. I refresh this. There we go. This is the original. If we look at this, there's the original div. And then inside the section, here's the div that I was copying with the clone node method. This div now exists as a copy of the original one. But because I put false right here, this means it's a shallow copy. It's not a deep copy. I'm not copying all of the content inside of it. If I change this to true, then I'm copying everything inside of it as well. So we'll change that to true, come back to the browser, refresh, and there it is. We have created a copy, and we've put it inside of this section. There we go. Now, if I put this inside of a loop, so let's say let i equals 0, i less than 5, i plus plus, there we are. Div1 is the original. I'm cloning it, a deep copy, and I'm appending it and I'm doing that five times. I refresh, there we go. Here's the first copy, the second copy, third, fourth, and fifth. Five copies of this, the original's still there, but inside this section I have five copies that I've created. So that's what the clone node does. It allows us to create multiple copies very quickly. All right, I'm going to comment this out just to leave myself a little bit of space on the page. Coming back into my HTML, I want to show you another way that you can 
create templates of content. Script tags, their default behavior is to not display content on the page. So we've created a script tag here, but I change the type. The type is not text slash JavaScript or application slash JavaScript or anything like that. It's text slash HTML. The content inside of this script tag is HTML. Now, the fact that I've said it's HTML here is of minor importance. I could have put text plain, or I could have said text template, or made something else up. I'm saying it's HTML just because it's a more accurate reflection of what I have in here. The important thing is that it is a script tag, and the type says that it's not JavaScript, so the browser's not going to try to run this script. I'm going to make a copy of this script tag using the clone node method, and then I'm going to extract this, which is the inner text inside of here. I am then going to tell the browser to convert that chunk of text into HTML, and that will be my copy. I'm going to put the copy inside of this section with target 2. So T2, I've already got the reference to that. What I need to do now is I need to find the content that's inside of that script tag. So let's say temp, short for template. That's going to use document query selector. And then this right here. I'm going to use that to target it. Works as well as anything else. Temp will be this element right here. I can create a clone of that. If I wanted to do this multiple times, clone's always a good choice. So let's say that... Um, oh, I don't have a, a variable for that. CLN, that'll be my clone. CLN equals temp dot clone node deep. So I have a copy now of that script tag. But it's not the script tag itself that's important to me, it's the stuff that's inside of it. I will now go to the div2, div2 is going to be my clone text content. So I made a copy of that script. I then took the script tags text content, which is everything here. All of that text is now what we have here. Now I'm going to go to my target and I'm going to set its inner HTML property to this. So div2 right now, right here, this is a string that's being placed inside of this variable. This string, when passed to the inner HTML property, the browser is going to want to parse this string and look and see, hey, is there anything inside there that looks like HTML? Well, absolutely. There's a div tag, there's an h2 tag, there's three paragraph tags. All of that content that's defined within that string is converted to HTML because of using this property. And now the contents of T2 will be that. Let's jump back to our browser and refresh this. So we have section one with the one I took out the for loop and section two well we have an error here fair to execute query selector not a valid selector oh yes of course square brackets the attribute selector in css requires square brackets around this attribute deep is not defined of course not this is a boolean <laughs> True is what we want to say. And there we are. And I will expand this so we can see it. Close this copy. And inside section two, there we have it. There is the content right here that was copied from the inside of this script tag. 
So this chunk of text was placed inside here using the inner HTML property, which converted it from the string into actual HTML. So that's another way that you can approach this. You can use script tags, which by default will not be shown on the page, set their type to something other than text slash JavaScript, because that's what makes the browser want to interpret this as JavaScript, and this will not be valid JavaScript, so I'll get errors appearing in my console, which will prevent my actual JavaScript from running. So we use a different type inside of a script tag, and then define the content that we're going to want to copy and place on the page one or more times in the future. All right, great. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.